Okay, we are in Wichita, Kansas. LaVon Perner is with us. He is the chairman of Cat Carpet and, 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 of, uh, and of course, Aaron Perner, who is a frequent guest on this program, who is the CEO and gentleman. It's great to have you with us. It's a pleasure to have you here. Now, the, the, the reason is, is most interesting. You have just rolled out the flooring project. Yes. Which is something totally new and different in this business. You had a, a grand opening last night. Several several dignitaries there. We did. We had a chance to see the store and to see all the bells and whistles. Aaron, let me ask you first, and just anybody that wants to answer at any time, just uh, just just jump in. Yeah. Um, talk about the concept. What 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 is the floor project? What the floor project is is our effort is to try to do what the customer wants us to do. We're in a unique position that we can bring both great salespeople, great supply chain, and great partners from a product perspective, and also great technology. So what we, what we did was, you know, after 45 years in business, our goal was to try to really truly listen to our customers. So we went out and we did market, market research focus study in the Midwest, focused around exactly what their wants and needs from an environment standpoint, and from a product standpoint, and from a technology standpoint that they wanted. So, in simple terms, what the floor project is, is it really is kind of the culmination of what our customers' desires were to make it easy for them to purchase floor covering and safe. And so, the, the, the effort that we had where there were five questions that we tried to answer for the customer, and much of that we tried to get done before they arrived to the, to the showroom. As a matter of fact, one of our internal people, they can shop before they shop, for lack of a better description because the experience on the web should be the same experience you have in the store, so it's not confusing. And as an industry, we don't do that well. So what, what our focus was is to you know, answer five key questions that every customer must know. The first one is, how soon can I get it? How much do I need? What's it going to cost? What's it going to look like? And then the final question is, is it right for me? Is this right for my, my life stage or my life cycle that I've got, uh, that I'm in? And so, you know, what we did was, through this market research that we did, we literally had pictures of samples and displays that are common in the industry. Uh, we tested that. We tested the business concept, you know, in, in very fine detail, all the way down to the size sample that the customer wanted. We also tried to, with a lot of supplier and uh, our key supplier partners that we work with, we try to take costs out of the system. The only way to truly deliver value in this industry is, and I think the industry is guilty of too much hydraulics. You know, we push costs back on the supply chain. Supply chain put, pushes it back on us. We had a really great experience partnering with our suppliers. What you'll find is that we can bring product to market. As a matter of fact, I think one of the claims that we can state that's true, 20% of the product you saw at the, at the store is probably not even launched yet. I mean, they were, I'll give you an example. One of our key supplier partners had a beautiful Versailles pattern that was in an LBT product. It didn't even make it to surfaces. But a Versailles pattern is so big, I mean, from a, from a visual perspective, you need to show it in a four-foot by four-foot area. Well, the reality is with technology and with a little bit of partnership with supply chain, with tools like this, you can show them exactly what it's going to look like. All they need is a mobile device, and there's a whole bunch of them, Kindles and Nooks and iPads and all the different op, you know technology options that are out there. So what we tried to do was to make it so that we can answer those five key questions so customers can buy. They hate to be sold, but they love to buy. So it's all about the customer experience. What did you learn about consumers who went into floor covering stores? What troubles did they have? What did they not like? I think you ought to talk about one of the big revelations we had that was not so big that we should have known. Yeah. Kind of the urban legend thing. Yes. What the customer is today versus what we thought they were today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The current wisdom is that the the uh, the customer base is much better educated about product and its uses and and uh, color and how to use it in their own home and in their own environment. But my read from this, and I was either present or or watched every tape, which was ours. We did two sessions in St. Louis, two in Wichita, and two in Topeka. And my takeaway was that the customers is as confused as they ever were. I mean, there's no change. It's uh, about the things that matter. 
I yeah. Mean, we've done a tremendous job in the industry communicating all the, the you know, the specs of in, industry data, 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 which they don't care yeah. about, nor do they really want. So, you know, gauge and stitch rate and twist level. And Weight and you know branded you know, fiber benefits that you they get. want benefits but not but not features <laughs> right? yeah they really do and and so you know what was surprising is that there's still a role in the support process for for you know allowing a customer to purchase the right product for their floor and I think the big mistake that's happened is that we've all lost sight of that I mean what what's happening is and you can a good example is. The industry is becoming best buyized. Everybody's trying to push costs out of it. But the reality is, from a consumer point of view, they need support and they need to know what they're buying and whether it's going to be right for them. It reflects on their taste. So it's a very risky purchase and it's a very emotional purchase. So. I've always thought that although many, many retailers are very aware of the price, want to keep the price as low as they can, obviously. Yes. But I think. At, at, at least the assumption I draw from never having sold a square inch of floor coverings in my life, that price isn't all that important to a consumer as long as they get what they want. It, it's in the top three, right, from a, a awareness perspective. And, and we, we went through tremendous energy, you know, as an organization. So we set up distribution centers. We've got items that are in stock in store. We've got items that are in stock in central distribution that we can get literally two to three days for any of the stores that we've got from a segment standpoint. And, and so, but the, and we have people that daily shop to make sure that they get the pre best price compared to the big boxes. And I mean, but once you, if it's an ante, I mean, it's table stakes. I mean, if you do what you must for pricing, it, it's really irrelevant because at that point, then it all becomes, are you doing the service for the customer the way they needed it? If the price is equal, then they're going to go with the person that they trust. And so our job is really to be that uh, humble servant to take good care of our customers. And we own what I would describe as customer intimacy. There's three business types and only three. You can be an operational excellent company, and we compete with a lot of them. They can deliver a box of goods to a customer cheaper than anybody in the market, and it'll absolutely be there by 2 o'clock right? Mm -hmm. when they say it's going to be there. There's a product leadership company, we talked about that earlier, Apple's an example, they create a product that the market doesn't even know that it needs. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of examples in our industry. We've got some very innovative companies that supply product to us. That's not CAP, that's not who we are. We own the customer experience, we're the ambassador for the supply chain that's out there. And the way we win with the consumer is to absolutely make the experience so good for them. And take such good care of them and be the best producer for our partners in the supply chain. So, you know, when we work with our, our supplier partners, the discussions that we have, now we're not doing it yet, but our goal is to, to truly share in a meaningful way backwards with the customer experience so we can partner and hopefully grow the segment against some of these other industries that are out there. If you notice, Dave, one of the thought processes was to truly find a piece of floor covering that the customer loved. And so there are no price tags on anything. Now, there's a code. They can read the QR code. It isn't that we're trying to hide that, but we wanted their first, their first sift of product to be what's truly pretty and what excites them. So you don't have a big price tag hanging in front of the merchandise. So the idea is I'm going to look for the color, the texture, or the style, whatever it is that I just fall in love with. And then we begin to deal with the price, the price process. But even that is done in gener general terms. I mean, once you find out how much product the customer needs, this one's 800, this one's 2600, whatever it is, and you, you talk ballpark figures to the customer. It's not $2.18 a foot. It's so much for the job. We did They've got a preconceived notion as to what they're, what they're willing to spend. Yes. Uh, yes. The range, I suspect. Yes. There's a lot of things that we tried to fix. I mean, we, we took two lifetimes plus a lot of great people in our companies, personal experience, face-to-face, -face, you know, walking, you know, with the customer. And also with the focus group work that we did and the research that we did between the, the phone surveys and the actual focus group. But we tried to answer a lot of the things that we know we needed to answer with a customer. I mean, 
it's crazy. We put way too much junk on the front of samples is what the customers tell us. They, they really want to know what it's going to look like and they want to have it be a, a simple, uncomplicated buying experience. Well, an example is the flip card racks that everybody's got. Customers hate those. They break their fingernails, mm -hmm. right? They lose track, so they flip down 10 and they find one they want and then they can't get back to it, right? So, you know, there were a lot of simple things that we tried to fix. Now, for those customers that are very price sensitive, we try to price by the project because the customer doesn't buy things. They do buy the foot, ultimately. But what they do is they pay by the project. And so, you know, our project partners, the people that are responsible for owning the experience that the customer has in our stores, what, what we talk about is total dollars. And so we built the pricing system so that it makes it easy for the customer to sell shop to trade up or trade down based on what their budget wants and needs are, because often they won't tell you. I mean, what they want is they want to start with the fashion and what they're looking for, and then the experience should be easy for them to shop and trade up or trade down. Well, words are important, Dave, and you noticed he said project partner. That's what we call our salespeople, because what that's how we want them to think of themselves, that this is a partnership with a, com with a customer, and the two together... The two together are supposed to find the ideal flooring for the customer. If you're not a partner, you're trying to sell them something, and everybody hates to be sold. They love to buy. <laughs>